Now, after weeks of rumors and sources, and uh, you know the the common we expect a deal soon stuff, uh, who would have thought we would get actual statements from a Pac-12 president who was actually present for last week's overhyped board meeting? Dennis Dodd has an article from Thursday over at CBS Sports titled "Nothing to Suggest New Pac-12 Media Rights Deal Is Near with 15 Months Left on Current Contract." Uh, in which he spoke with Arizona President Robert Robbins. Now, Robbins is leaving next Tuesday for a trip to Kazakhstan, and he won't be back until the second week of April, which means we can certainly expect that there won't be any Pac-12 news until at least mid-April, right? A lot of the articles about the potential demise of the Pac-12 or expansion or a pending media rights deal has been shrouded in sources, and a lot of times uh, different media members have conflicting reports because they do have different sources. Uh, I've long said that nobody knows what to expect, but in this case, Dodd got quotes directly from somebody that's in those rooms and who is directly impacted by what's happening. Now, Robbins is the one who set a soft April 15th deadline for the Pac-12 to at least present a financial estimate, which it means this. If the presidents didn't have any financials, nobody else did either, right? Uh, the quotes in the story did not disappoint. So make sure, of course, go over to cbssports.com and, uh, and take a look at it. But let's dissect exactly what President Robbins was saying here. All right, quote, I have heard nothing to suggest a deal is imminent. There's all these things about, well, we want to wait until after the Final Four. That has nothing to do with it. It has to do with assessing who is the right fit, who assesses us. Okay, now breaking that one down, if the presidents don't know, or I guess he's letting you know, presidents do not know, which means that nobody knows what I just said. There's no deal being voted on right now. They don't even know the numbers. As far as assessing who is the right fit and who assesses them, to me, uh, this is because they still don't know what to do with streaming or linear. But we're, we're going to get into that. Okay, moving on. Uh, another quote here. I hope Commissioner Klyovkov gets something done sooner rather than later so that the whole thing stops so we don't have to focus on it. But I am perfectly willing to sit here and wait. Now, to me, it, that sounds like the presidents are as tired of this process as we are. Right? Seriously, it is exhausting. The interesting thing here uh, is him saying, I am perfectly willing to sit here and wait. Like, I think it is absolutely true that Arizona, along with at likely at least a couple of other schools, would prefer to stay in the Pac-12, but haven't ruled out the idea of moving to another conference to keep their athletics program stable. All right? So moving along, we got another quote here. This is a quote from him that says, This whole streaming thing, that's overplayed. I think this deal is going to have a heavy traditional analog cable piece. I think. There may be some streaming in it, but I don't think anybody would want to go majority streaming. Whoa. <laughs> right? Like, this is this is bananas. We have not heard anybody try to claim that the reports of a mostly streaming deal were incorrect. Robbins stating that he doesn't think anybody would want to go majority streaming says to me that Apple is not going to be interested in this. Like, the interesting part here is the idea that there could be a heavy linear partner. ESPN is reportedly still wanting the Pac-12, but how many games are they willing to put on ESPN, ESPN2, ABC, etc.? cetera? Uh, because they've already got a ton of other conference deals already done. And how much are they willing to spend? That's the bigger issue here. Uh, there's been talk that NBC could be a, a last-ditch Hail Mary partner, but they've got their afternoons and evenings already tied up with Notre Dame and the Big Ten. Like, do they do a USA Network Peacock deal and put Pac-12 games, like, on NBC when Notre Dame doesn't have a home game? Now, that's a possibility, but how much more is NBC interested in spending on a Pac-12 deal after they just got done with the Big Ten deal, right? They've got Notre Dame that's coming up in 2025. They just got the Big Ten deal done, and they spent a fortune for the Big Ten Saturday night deal. Why would you go and get the Pac-12 for, you know, maybe some of the afternoons and to maybe go on your USA Network stuff. Are, are they trying to push USA Network? Like, that's, that's interesting. The current Pac-12 deal ends on July 1st, 2024, and Adad stated that future media deals are typically done around 18 months beforehand. The Pac-12 deal was done two and a half years early. The SEC and ESPN announced their new 10-year deal, which starts in 2024, back in December of 2020. Now, this that the Pac-12 is doing right now is not common. However... The Big Ten did just announce their deal in August 2022, and it begins on July 1st, 2023. It's so only about 11 months prior. So it's it's not unheard of. It's just not common. All right, continuing on. Quote, 
I don't feel the angst of everyone else in the world. Maybe it's because I'm too dumb to realize. Uh, we've got a deal for another 15 months. We're the only ones out there. It's not like we're competing with anybody else. Nobody out there is wanting to do a deal. We'll wait and see what happens. Okay, let's break this down. He is correct. They're not competing, and there's not anyone wanting to do a deal right now. But that's because the Big 12 beat them to the punch. The Big 10 and the SEC have deals starting in the next two years, and the ACC is locked in until 2036. So I don't know that it's quite the advantage that he's tossing out here, right? Uh, Before this last quote, Robbins told CBS a couple of weeks ago that Arizona had options, and and he suggested that if it's not satisfied with the Pac-12's new deal, Arizona has the ability to drive to Lubbock, (laughs) which is an interesting quote. Uh, His quote is, it wasn't because I was emboldened because we have options. There is, a, there is no deal or no agreement where, if everything blows up, we've got someplace to go. Uh, look, bottom line on this, he knows that the Big 12 wants Arizona. Academically, he would love to stay with the Pac-12. At Arizona has grown significantly due to the partnership with the Pac-12. But if the Pac-12 is falling apart, Arizona will not get caught holding the bag. They're not going to get caught without a home. So... The Pac-12 has to make sure that Arizona is set up in this, right? Uh, Dodd references Nick Kahn's interview with Marshawn and Oran multiple times towards the end of the article, as he should, because like Kahn is as tied into the world of sports media as anybody in the country. He's a former executive at CAA. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he helped negotiate uh, the SEC's deal with ESPN and the WWE's with NBC Universal and Fox. Like prior to him joining WWE as an executive, he's represented Herb Street, Tom Rinaldi. Uh, Colin Cowherd, Clay Travis, among a bunch of others. Like, Khan knows a lot of stuff. He stated in that interview that the Pac-12 got caught off guard with UCLA leaving the Pac-12 along with USC. People knew USC could leave. They didn't have a clue about UCLA. Uh, And Khan stated, I didn't love that I saw some complaining about it after by the Pac-12. Complaining is not a strategy. Now, he's not wrong. Klyovkov even spent time lobbying the UC system to try and block UCLA's move, which wasted valuable time and resources, and, and really rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Like, Khan says they should try to sign a shorter contract to stable everything or stabilize everything and then work on a longer-term deal. But here's my question. How many potential partners want to just give some money now and then give a lot more later? Like, most want financial certainty over a longer term, and I don't imagine that the conference is going to grow a lot at least in popularity, over the next three years. Like, at three to five years, I guess. Like, at the end of the day, all this is still incredibly interesting uh, and still incredibly exhausting. This has been a complete disaster. The fact that the presidents have no idea about potential financials uh, when they're attempting to budget ahead is unbelievable. Like, I'm I'm beyond ready to see the end of this. Looks like we're going to be waiting for for quite some time going forward. Hey, if you like this video... Go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.